Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. In today's session, I shall be discussing on the introduction to process scheduling and the various times needed in process scheduling. So before you start watching this session, please subscribe to my channel and share this video with your friends. So let us begin the topic today. Uh, let us begin this uh, session now. So this particular session is all about first introduction to process scheduling. Already you people are aware of what exactly is a process in the operating system. So this I have discussed in detail in my previous video sessions. Now coming to this schedule, uh, scheduling, first you have to know about the word scheduler. This scheduler and once again the scheduler can be from of two types, the long term scheduler and the short term scheduler. Now let me tell you the difference. First let us talk on scheduler. Scheduler is a set of programs that makes a process or that chooses the pro that chooses the process from the ready queue and assign the CPU for execution. So in simpler words, what I'll tell you is, see normally I'm using the word here ready queue. Ready queue is where, ready queue is nothing but your main memory. The processes are present in the main memory, P1, P2, P3, something like this I have written. So these processes, the what is the job of the scheduler? It will pick the process, one of these process from the memory and it will allocate CPU, this resource to the process. Suppose if it is picking the process P2, picking a process from P2, uh, picking a process from the main memory and then assigning what? Assigning the CPU to process P2 for execution. This is called as scheduler. So now what you have to know is, this is normally we call it as the short term scheduler or the CPU scheduler. So this is the job of uh, the short term scheduler or the CPU scheduler. Then what is the job of the long term scheduler? Long term scheduler picks the process from the job queue. Now what is job queue? So this also I will tell you, see in the system you have the secondary memory and the main memory. Normally all the programs are residing where they are residing in the secondary memory initially. Only at the time of execution, the processes or the programs are brought from the secondary memory and they are what? They are put into the main memory. Now, let me tell you about the different times that are required here in process scheduling. Which are the different times? All the times I have written here. But before that, try to understand the concept of multiprogramming. Process running at all times to maximize CPU utilization. Now here we are carrying out what, see operating system has got what important feature, it has got a feature called as multiprogramming. Now multiprogramming is making the process run, process running at all times to maximize the CPU utilization. More number of programs are there in the main memory, multiprogramming. more number of programs are there in the main memory. Because look here, if we have a system with a single processor, now if there is one single process in the main memory, then this process from the main memory will be assigned to the processor for execution. Let us assume that there is one process in the main memory. If that process is assigned to the CPU for execution and that particular process will not be using the CPU all the time because it may make an input output request. At the time when it makes an input output request, it does not require what? It does not require CPU. So that time the CPU is idle. Now not to make this CPU idle, to make the CPU that is maximize the utilization of the CPU, we go for what? Multiprogramming. That means you keep more number of programs in the main memory. You assign one single pro process to the processor. When it makes an input output request, the other program can be assigned to the CPU so that the CPU is all the time busy carrying out the execution of one or the other program. So we say multiprogramming is what? For what purpose? To maximize the CPU utilization. There is one more term called multitasking that I will be telling you once I explain the different way times here that are needed for process scheduling. So let me come to this part of the session wherein I am going to tell about the Now for arrival time and also to understand this concept of arri arrival time, let me just give you one simple uh, uh, this one uh, illustration to make you understand all the different times. 
see normally what will happen no when we say we are carrying out we are trying to find uh, know the different times that are used in scheduling so we have to where this exactly what do you where exactly is this scheduling uh, happening in the system it is mainly between what main memory and the cp main memory and cp so we let us take that these two uh, different components are becoming a part of our system so we'll call that as a system here okay and one particular system let me just give you that suppose this is the entry to the system fine and this is the exit to the system now let us not bother about the exit we are only uh, carrying out we are trying to find out uh, we are only trying to know what is arrival time here a process the time at which a process is what brought into the main memory that is the process the time at which the process is there in the ready state that is called as the arrival time so the process has come here to the system now it is there at the entry this process p1 let us assume then once it enters the system what is that the process is expecting the process is expecting the execution of it and for execution it requires cpu now once the process is entering into the system it will what it will expect that the cpu will be assigned to the process p1 so let us take that okay fine this is the cpu now the process got the cpu immediately soon after it entered the system so first thing is this possibility is there the process is getting as uh, getting the cpu immediately sometimes the process may not get the cpu immediately it has to wait so we are just showing this duration as the waiting time then it gets what then it gets what the cpu for execution now with this diagram you will try to know the different times here so arrival time the time at which the process enters the system the time at which the process enters the system means the time at which the process is brought into the main memory now it is there main memory whenever i am using it is the ready state please refer the video session wherein i have explained the different states of a process so it is in the ready state now from the ready state it will go to the running state is what i have mentioned in the diagram now that running state is nothing but getting the cpu allocated to that process for execution so that way we say a process the time at which the process is there in or the process is brought into the main memory or it is in the ready state is called as the arrival time fine right? now process needs some time for execution so the time the complete time duration the process takes to complete its job is called as the burst time so now let us assume that process p1 has entered here but it did not get the cpu afterwards it got the cpu and it has taken this much of time of cpu to complete its task so that is called as the burst time the time a process takes to complete its job and when we say complete it is computation when we say computation it is what the need for the cpu so the cpu time needed for the process to complete its job becomes what the burst time here now the process complete its job it has to exit from the system that means now the processor has to get so from the ready state when it was executing it is in the running state now from the running state it has to be what it is now departing so we say the process has completed its job once it complete its job it will what it will leave the system it will leave the system here in a sense the cpu is deallocated from that process no more this process requires the cpu so we'll say okay the process has completed its job and it will end or terminate so this becomes what the process is terminated once it completes its job so this is what the arrival the time at which the process completes its job becomes what the completion time fine so this completion time is time whereas i mean to say it is a point of time arrival time is a point of time whereas burst time is the duration it may take this much of time to complete its job so it is a duration here next we have the turnaround time turnaround time is the total time a process spends in the system because it has entered here then it is exiting here so it has waited for some period of time also and then it has utilized the cpu for some period of time the total time a process spends in the system becomes what the turnaround time fine so this complete duration becomes what so once again this is also duration 
turn around time. Now, waiting time is what? The time a process waits in the ready queue to get the CPU. That means it is waiting for its turn. CPU is still not allocated to that process. It is there in the ready queue. So, the time that process is waiting in the ready queue becomes what? The waiting time. Look here. This part is the process has waited here. So, that is called as the waiting time. Then you can easily find out if this is the waiting time and if this is the burst time. Fine. And also if this is the turnaround time, then you look here. This is the completion time. You can find out what easily the turnaround time. Turnaround time is the duration. So, the time at which it completes its job. The completion time minus what the arrival time gives you the turnaround time. Very simple. These kind of uh, things will be asked in the numericals when I am teaching you the process scheduling algorithms. You will come to know. But it is very simple to calculate. Just to understand the concept, I have taken this kind of illustration. So, waiting time I have ex okay, explained. It is this duration. The response time is the time at which for the first time the process gets the CPU. For the first time it gets the CPU. In a sense here, when a process has entered at this time, okay, it has waited at this point of time it got the CPU. So, this becomes what the time at which it gets the hold of CPU becomes the response time. We say the time at which the process gets for the first time the CPU. Now, why I am using first time is when you try to, when you learn the preemptive type of scheduling, that time you will appreciate this uh, first time. At present, this we are considering a scenario for non-preemptive. Non-preemptive and preemptive or difference I have uh, in, uh, conveyed in the previous session. Still, I will uh, repeat. If the process is allocated to CPU for execution, it will complete its job and it will what it will be deallocated the processor. So that means we say it is non-preemptive in nature. Once assigned, you allow the process to complete its job. Fine. So at the time at which here also you can see once assigned, it is complete. Further, it is not waiting. Further, it is not waiting. Once you assign, once the process gets the CPU, it will complete its job and it will leave the system. So that becomes what the response time. Now, this is what the next, uh, this, this, this is not a time. You should know that this is also one of the important attributes in the process scheduling. Throughput is what the number of processes getting executed per unit time. If it is one hour, how many processes get executed? So, definitely we require what the throughput to be maximum. So, I have indicated here with the arrow direction. So, we want maximum throughput, but we want minimum response time. We want minimum waiting time. We want minimum turnaround time. So, this minimum wherever I have written that if these values are minimum, then we say what? Yes, that particular scheduling algorithm is having what is an efficient scheduling algorithm. If it is giving minimum values for these kind of times. When we try to go to a supermarket or a mall, we stand in the queue to get our bill. Isn't it? You, you get the bill done at the counter. Now, you, you, when you start making your bill, you are already seeing that there is a queue. So, you stand in the queue. So, that is what we say the process is also in the ready queue. That means it is standing in the, it is there in the main memory, but here you are, the person is standing in the ready, uh, in the queue to get its billing done. Now, there are chances that if there are no persons in the, uh, this one, if there are no people in the queue and if you are the first one, you will immediately get the CPU at this point only. That is one possibility. Suppose if there are people in the queue, then you are waiting for some time until your turn comes. Now, wherever I have written CPU, it means what the person that is uh, billing your, uh, making the billing. So, that once you get that, okay, once you get your turn to that person who is making the bill is nothing but here you are getting hold, the process is getting hold of CPU. So, once you start making your bill, until your bill gets completed, you will be there only. So, that becomes what? That becomes a duration there. You are spending some time with that at the counter to get your bill done. That is a duration. But at what time have you entered, you, have you started standing in the queue? That is what you have to see here. Suppose you came uh, into that particular counter at time 2 p.m. Okay. You waited there for some time. Your turn came at 2.30 p.m. Let us take. Then you got the bill done. Then you have spent some uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, let us say. Simply, I will just increase the time duration. Normally, will not take. 
3 pm you completed your billing you have purchased more items so you have taken more time there and you are coming out from that particular counter uh, at 3 pm so look here from 3 3 minus 2 you came at 2 you left at 3 that becomes what the turnaround time 3 minus 2 1 hour is your turnaround time but waiting time you can see here how much you have waited for 30 minutes what about the uh, this one uh, response time at what time you got that hold on the counter that means started billing at 2 30 pm so hope this analogy will help you in uh, understanding the different times here so what is the conclusion conclusion is we want minimum waiting time minimum turnaround time and minimum response time but we want maximum throughput number of times number of processes that are getting executed per unit time you are expecting more and you should also know about one more word called as multitasking multitasking and multiprogramming just see the difference more number of processes in the main memory becomes the concept of multiprogramming multitasking is cpu is carrying out more than one task at a time at a time in a sense because of preemptive preemptive feature the cpu can carry out more number of tasks at a time like process p1 is assigned to cpu for execution p1 makes what an input output request so p1 is what deallocated from the cpu then p2 is assigned to cpu p2 also makes a input output request it is deallocated from the cpu until it completes its input output request p3 is p1 has completed its input output so it will be reassigned to once again cpu so p3 has left from cpu and p3 is carrying out its input output that means you can see in parts the cpu is completing the job of all these three processes so it's it is like multitasking definitely it is like multitasking or we say time slicing the complete time is sliced and it is given to different processes for execution so this is all about the introduction to process scheduling and the various times that are needed here in process scheduling so in my future video sessions i shall explain you the different scheduling algorithms and how to calculate these times also i'll be explaining to you hope this session is useful to you all thank you bye bye take care